Judah Adkins or Tamaya, and I just want to welcome you again today. How big is God.org? I pray you started out your day in a wonderful way today. I pray, <coughs> excuse me, that you give the Lord some time in your life. That you got up with worship and praise or got up and grabbed your Bible. Because this day and this hour, children of God, we cannot go without it. Or those that are listening, that are considering Jesus, don't just consider him. Ask him to come into your heart. I promise you, ask him to make him Lord of your life. You will not be sorry. Because he says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that if you ask him into your life, you are a new creature, a new species. And therefore, the things that, that bothered you, things that, that are uh, hard on your mind, You'll, you'll begin to see how Jesus will lift those burdens, how this change in your life, if you will let Jesus a hold of you, if you will serve him with all your heart, not just in name, Christian, even Christians that are call, calling on the name of the Lord, you can't just call on him when you want him. I made a, a video a long time ago called, He's not a genie in the bottle. That you can rub the, uh, the bottle and say, Come out, Lord, I need your help. But when you don't need him and you want to go on with your life, you, you want him to go back in the bottle. That isn't the way things go. When you come into the things of God, when you ask Jesus into your heart, you become part of the family of God. You're no more alienated in the commonwealth. Jesus broke down in Coloss or Ephesians chapter 3. He broke down the middle wall of partition between us. There's no longer any difference between the Greek or the Jew or the, the Gentile or uh, the Ara uh, Arabs or anybody. Jesus flung open the door, or the Father did, through the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus to every man, woman, and child. And so, when we come into the family of God, we are, our, what governs God's kingdom is the love of God. Isn't it? Yes, it is. That is the law. Jesus said, I have one law. Love the Father God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because when you love one another, you're not out trying to cancel somebody's life. You're not out trying to prove a point. You're out to love people into the family of God and to, to see that their lives can be full and blossom. And that you can have peace that when you lay down at night, that you're not wor worried if you, if you was to die in your sleep where you would go. You know you would go to be with the Father because... You are now part of the family of God. Now, we can't receive Jesus and then not read our Bibles because the Bible tells us and directs us how to serve the Lord. It tells us what he likes and dislikes. But when you become a new creature, you want to be a father pleaser. You're not trying to see how much sin you can get by with, by abusing grace. You, you love him and embrace him with all your heart, and you want to please him. A father and son, even of a natural family, they have a good relationship. And they have a good understanding and a good base, home uh, family base. The son wants to please his father. And the father delights in his son to see him be the best that he can be. But the father God is far able, far able to reach into you, far able to reach into your life and do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think or ask. He loves it when we ask. He loves it when we say, Father, 
help me. Father, I need, I need this in my life. But he wants you to grow spiritually because we can, have, we can have certain things given to our lives that we're not ready for. And if he would give them to us at that time, they could be destructive to us. But when we walk with the Lord daily, he gives us what we need daily, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Listen, when you are a Christian, you're out. Jesus said in, it says in Acts 10, 38, Jesus went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. That becomes your mission as well, that you want to see people free. You don't want to tag people and put rig, hard rigor. That's the devil. And these people that are doing this is the bidding of the enemy. And listen, pastors, you're going to have to get, you're going to have to, uh, to uh, get the Bible out. You're going to have to reveal and share these things that there's no difference in God. When we try to make one group over the other, that we're trying to reconcile and make things right, there's only God that can reconcile and make things right, folks. Every person that lives on this, the face of this earth is went through some type of persecution. The, the English ran to, to America because the king in England was so oppressive. You couldn't read your Bible. You couldn't paint a picture. You couldn't do anything without the king's say so. You couldn't own land. So we, those that were killed and persecuted that tried to go against the king, just like today, you know, every, every, I think, you know, person under the sun in their, in their lives or in their ancestry's lives sought to be free. But you know what the true freedom is? The only true freedom that we'll ever have is in God. When we start trying to please groups and we start trying to make up for things that really is far reaching and out of our, uh, we can't do it. But the Lord can set things in order. But our thing if you are a Christian and you name the name of the Lord and you're caught up in this, woe well be to you because it will carry you off in dark places that you don't want to be. And it will entangle you in things and cause you to say words that the devil through other people will try to make you follow through on when really you were caught up in a situation that you didn't mean to get caught up in. Pastors, be careful. Because they're bidding for you. Men of God, evangelists, people that, are, that know the Lord, be careful. Because the Bible says that we are to walk in love and let him take care of things. And that there's therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. If you walk after the flesh you are going to be in major trouble. But when you say, Lord, I can't reconcile these things. I have friends now that are treating me like enemies. Husbands and wives that are uh, of different ethnic groups are considering divorce because they are getting carried off in this garbage that is being vomited straight out of hell. And then, the ch what do you do with your children? How do you divide all of this? How do you reckon to make it right? You can't. And you know you can't. These things are bigger than us. And this is a tool used by the devil because if he can always cause a division, in God, there's no division. There's neither Jew or Greek or Gentile. And even in... Uh, uh, in the New Testament, Paul and them that got to, uh, that was born again realized that the slaves even were born again 
were of brethren and they couldn't they didn't treat them like slaves anymore they were part of the body of Christ listen to me folks if we've ever needed to to gain ground if we've ever needed to pray for solid ground pray for it now if we've ever stood up you've got to stand up for the cause of Christ the, the Lord is he is fair and just with equity. He doesn't come down on you with a rod iron and say, you got to do this and you got to do that and this is my will. He doesn't operate that way. So when people try to dominate over another group that is totally and completely devilish, I don't care who it is, white, black, who it is. We can't do it. And these people that are out canceling people's lives, beware. Because when you can, God will only allow you to go so far until you start running into Him. And when you start running into Him, and He reveals, or allows your life to be revealed, or allows those things that you're doing, and causes you and your intentions and causes you to look foolish in your own garbage. And that's what usually happens. Judges that are out letting the, the just or the, the bad guys go and the just and those that are doesn't need to be in jail and putting the innocent in jail. God allowed you to take the bench. You swore on the Bible with your hand that you would judge in equity, fairness, and justice. And when you begin to judge people, because God is the judge of the whole earth, when you begin to be the judge, guarantee you, you will be judged by the very things that you're doing. And you will get on the wrong side of things and you will end up, usually, you will lose your profession and everything. Is it worth it? Do you think for a minute that the few people, it's only a few, it's as far as the, the, the majority of the people even on this earth, even uh, Britain doesn't want our craziness. England doesn't want this craziness. People know and realize that these things are nothing but trash and it's nothing but to divide people. And that these things will always come back knocking on your door because the Bible says what you reap, what you sow, you will reap. What you sow intentionally, knowing better, you will reap those things. There are certain things that we do. Yes, we can ask God's forgiveness. We can say, Lord, forgive us of that. We, we, I am so repentive and be so repentive in heart. But when there's damage done, there is certain things that you will have to pay the last pence, especially when he's spoken to your heart. And especially when he tried to flag you down and many, many times. But you kept on this road of pleasing men and trying to uh, uh, appease everybody. The Bible doesn't tell us to do that. It says that we are to walk with the Lord daily. That we are to have compassion and love toward people. We are not out to make division. We are out to see a people come together in unity. Because if you are divided, it is a true saying. Jesus said that if the strong man comes into your house, it, you're divided. Or, he says, you know, they called him Beelzebub. He said, if you call me Beelzebub, by who are you calling yourself? 
you sinners, you people that are doing what you're doing. He said, who are you? And this is what they're trying to do here is make uh, Christians look like Beelzebub and calling them crazy and threatening them if they give the truth of the Bible and saying the ones that are threatening are fair and just and right? Really? How are you going to judge your children, he told the lawmakers and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. By what standard are you going to tell your children, this is right, this is wrong, you can act this way, and they're wrong, because you're, de you're totally and completely hypocritical. Woe unto those that call good evil and evil good. The Bible says that. We can't, in the, the Lord Jesus said, sweet waters and bitter cannot come out of the same fountain. Either the fountain is pure, it's one or the other. The enemy loves to drag issues over into the gray area so that he can make division. Christians, we need to be wise as serpents and harmless as, as doves. We need to see and be aware of these things. Jesus said, if you were strong and you were alert, you wouldn't allow the strong man to come in and take over. If you know the word and you're strong in the Lord, you're not going to allow these people that appear like they have some clout and power to come in and take over. You're going to call it for what it is. We have to start standing up for what is right. If we Christians do not stand for what is right, who's going to stand? Who will? You know, the Bible says here, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, to that which is good, to causing the situation to be, to be made right. Conversations, communi uh, communications. To have a good conversation, a level conversation, a conversation that makes sense. It'd be nice just to turn on the news and something to make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. It says, Let no com corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying or building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, we can't be Christians and, and throwing, uh, puking up all of this garbage and going along with it and say we're Christians. And expect the Holy Spirit to, deal, to seal us. And like I said, you're going to have many that was going to say, Oh, Lord, Lord, um, you know, I cast out devils in your name. I have the, the nerve to do that. After living this, you know, wonky life that, you know, one foot in the, uh, the devil's territory and one foot in God's territory. No, that doesn't go over. Jesus stood up and said it like it was. And we have to stand up for what is right. It says, let all bitterness... All wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice that you don't have an ill will that you're trying to make somebody pay. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. It says in Ephesians. Chapter 5, 
Verse 1, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication, all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you that have become a saints. Neither filthiness, foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, suitable. Is it sowing seeds, bad seeds, jesting, and things like that? sow the wrong kind of seeds. It takes people, you're in a conversation and it causes people to think in the wrong direction. Foolishness, folly. There's so much folly that's, that's in the heart of people today. Folly that is uh, something that you don't, uh, you know the truth, but you don't, you know, you just laugh over it and continue on doing crazy things. That's folly. Only it's a lot deeper than that. And it says, For this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you, child of God, with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. It's not walking as children of light when you continue on and you jump on the bandwagon with all this craziness. That's not, no, that's confusion. And the Bible said God did not give us a spirit of confusion, but love, power, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 We would do well, and it's very obvious that a lot of Christians are not reading their Bible, and they're just going along with all this stuff. But God is fair and just. There's no one more fair than God. When you walk in love, you don't get into those areas. Amen. And it says, <clears throat> For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and in truth. What's the truth today? Is the truth making division? Knowing that we all have, you know, all of us. Yes, we learn from our history. We learn from our mistakes. But it, you show me a nation that hasn't made mistakes. I don't care who they are. Mistakes that are trying to be corrected. But now we have people over here that don't even live in our nation. Trying to come over and dictate to us how to live our lives and throw out the Constitution and to throw out Christianity and throw out whatever, anything that stands for good. And we are not standing up for what is right. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But in all things that are reproved, exposed, are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth. There's many sleeping today. In the body of Christ. And arise from the dead. Out of your dead sleep. You know. When you're asleep. A lot of people say you're dead out. He's asleep. He doesn't know what's going on. He's gone. Or she's gone. Wake from. It says awake from the dead. Wake from that deep sleep. Get up. 
and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, cautiously, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now this is what we are to do, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. There you go. That we are to submit to his will and to one another. That the body of Christ may move by like a one, one man in Christ. That our thoughts are godly. That our actions are godly. That we reach out a hand to lift up. Not to jump on this uh, uh, bandwagon of trash. And to divide. No, no. And it says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's meaning that we all have a place, the, the husband, the wife, and the children. And it goes on to tell us about the children and the wives, that we are to, the man is to treat his wife correctly and love her as you love Christ. And the woman is to do the same. And to treat our children with love and respect. You know, it's hard to kick against the pricks. It's hard to kick against the goads, isn't it? When you start trying to make things right, just like Christ told Paul, Paul was under the law. He said under Galileo, he was well versed in the law. He thought he was doing right. He couldn't understand this new covenant that come into being until Christ, he ran into Christ one day and knocked him off his high horse. Is that what's going to have to happen to many? That they're going to have to get knocked off their high horse? Because believe me, when you start getting in the way of God, you must, you, you be careful because you will run into God. When you stri start trying to take over his creation, and especially when you start putting your hands on God's anointed, and even Christians coming against one another, beware because you will be taken captive by your own will, by Satan. Because you will get into areas that you know that can take and cause disaster in your life. This is a hard message. And I'm sorry that, but I know that these things have to start being spoken. These things have to be said. These things Christians, we've got to sharpen our swords in the Word of God and to walk uprightly before Him. He loves you. God is love, and in Him is no darkness at all. And we are the children of light, and we are to walk in His love and His lightness. We can do it. We can Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every one out there today. That, Lord, that they would examine themselves. That, Lord, that they would be, that they would begin to grab their Bibles. And that they would begin to see what you have to say about things. This crazy world, we know when they're not born again, they're in darkness. They'll do crazy things. They'll do and say anything. Because they want power, because Satan wants power. And he's doing, people doing his bidding. 
and causing division. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you come into the picture. That, Lord, that, that your people will get on the same page with you. That, Father, that there will be a hard examination. That they will be a correction and repentance of those things that we know is not right. And that we get back in the, your good graces. Get back on solid ground and repent of those things that we are allowing the enemy to carry us away with. Father, bless and keep your people. Let there be greatness. Let Show them your greatness and your beauty and your kindness. Show them how precious you are. And that, Lord, that you are good. And your, and your goodness endureth forever toward your people. And, Father, I praise you and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, come back and see me again. I know these things are hard, but we have to face them. And we have to face them with the love of God in our hearts. Are you ready to face them? Are you ready to speak the truth? The Bible said in Isaiah, buy the truth and sell it not. This is buying the truth. When you sell out for other people and, and garbage, that's selling out the message of Christ. That's selling out the goodness of God. Don't do it. Pastors, stand up and tell your, your people the truth. Start leading them to, that, to give them strength, messages that will give them strength to stand in this hour. Preaching about giving is not, that's not giving them strength. Just choosing messages, picking and choosing, is not giving the body of Christ strength. Stand up. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Speak the truth. And it will take over in people's lives and they'll begin to do it. God bless you. Have a good day. In Jesus' name, remember God is in you and with you, and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Bye-bye.